This is my full long-term review of the iPhone 15. All right, first things first, let's talk about the build and the body. So this phone is made out of aluminum and feels really lightweight in the hand. I was actually kind of surprised at how light it felt. And if you're coming from a pro, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. It has the latest ceramic shield front and the color infused glass back. Now this glass back looks really, really nice. And there's a couple main reasons for that. The first and obvious one is the fact that the color is now infused into the glass. So what that essentially means is that those nasty fingerprints that we're all familiar with that always get our iPhones looking ugly is now no more. I don't know why the flashlight's on. And now it just looks great because the color is built into the glass and there's no fingerprints. It has this interesting matte texture feeling on the back, which is a little bit slippery at first, don't get me wrong, but after a couple days, you'll get used to it. Like I said, this phone is super lightweight in the hand and you know, it has that perfect depth and perfect width to make it, you know, really comfortable to hold. It has the squared off design that we're all familiar with. It has these brushed edges on the side so that again, there are no more fingerprints. I really like that Apple's doing this now because you know, the phones before it, they would always get covered in fingerprints and make the phone look super ugly. But now with these brushed edges and as well as the color infused back, you just can't go wrong with it, right? The phone honestly still looks like the day it came out of the box. As for the front, it's super modern looking with super thin bezels and of course the dynamic island. Now granted, it's not like this front design with the dynamic island is new or anything like that, but you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it and this front looks great. But speaking of the screen, let's talk about the display. So you've got the usual Super Retina XDR screen with a 2556 by 1179 resolution at a 460 pixels per inch. Now what all those numbers really mean is that the phone is super clear and super high quality. It also goes up to 2000 nits of brightness, so even outside in the sunniest conditions, you're going to be able to see this phone perfectly. Now, let me be honest with you guys. Scratches on the new iPhones has always been something that for some reason I struggle with. I have no idea why nobody else talks about this, right? But for some reason, my phones always seem to get scratched whenever I get the new ones. And I'm not doing anything crazy, all right? I keep my wallet and my keys in one pocket and literally just keep the phone and AirPods in another. So I have no idea how it gets scratched, but for some reason, it always manages to happen to me. But what I did notice this time around is that the phone is way more durable to all of those little scratches that accumulate from whatever it is that I seem to be doing wrong. I also noticed that's actually a little bit better at handling all the fingerprints that usually show up on your phone. And I think that they did mention this about the display technology. So I can definitely notice that on this phone. Like I said, it's super bright and the colors are amazing. So no matter what you're doing, especially for doing things like consuming content, just makes it that much of a better experience. From a clarity perspective, this phone is crystal clear and the dynamic island obviously levels up the experience a ton. If you've never experienced it because you're on an older phone, trust me, you'd think that it's not a lot, but the added utility that this brings to the iPhone, it just levels up the experience that much more. I like that they managed to integrate something that's supposed to be a negative and turn it into a positive because the dynamic island is actually really useful. But now let's talk about the speed and the chip. So this phone has the same A16 Bionic chip that we saw in the iPhone 14 Pro. Now I know at first glance, to be honest, this looks kind of lazy on Apple's part, right? Reusing the same old chip, but I think that there are two main ways of looking at this. Two, two main ways. So first is just looking at this objectively from the numbers perspective, right? The chip in the iPhone 14 Pro was insanely fast, whether you're gaming, whether you're doing your day-to-day -day things like texting, calling, using social media, whatever it is, right? This chip is going to be able to do everything that you need it to do. Honestly, if you need more power, just buy a computer, bro. Like, I don't know how much more power you need on a phone with such simple tasks, right? Even for high level gaming with super high graphics, these chips are able to handle it. And for everything else that the 99% of us are doing, nothing on this phone feels slow. But the other way of looking at it is that while you could argue that the speeds are, you know, fast enough and that the differences between the chips are marginal, something about using the same old chip just feels off. Like I think from an outer perspective, just looking at the advancement of technology, I don't know if this is the right move. I don't know if reusing the same old stuff that we've used in the past is really the right mentality that these companies should have when it comes to creating new technology that is supposed to be pushing the envelope year over year. Obviously, that's a whole debate in and of itself, but the bottom line when it comes to the iPhone 15 is that this phone is insanely fast. And for anybody wondering about future proofing, this phone is gonna be fine. I swear, like the iPhone 8 is still completely fine. It's not the fastest, it's kind of garbage to be honest, but it's usable. So I'm not concerned about the chip when it comes to this phone. The thing that I'm really thinking about is when Apple does this and you know, they use the same old chip in their phone, are other companies going to take note of this? And are they gonna follow suit and just start this perpetual thing of using the same old technology in new devices and, you know, of course, charging new prices? Cause that'd be kind of whack. That would kind of be depressing. <laughs> Even though it is a vanity metric of making these phones a little bit faster, you could argue that it is still the right direction, that forward is always the right direction. 
But anyways, enough of that rant. Let's talk about the speakers. So you've got two stereo speakers built into this phone, one at the top, one at the bottom. And this was something that was super surprising to me about this phone. Like, trust me, of all the new things that Apple added to this phone, the last thing that I thought would impress me was the speakers. But when I went outside and I tested this, it was actually insane the difference between this and something like the iPhone 12. The speakers are so loud, so clear. It's actually nuts. Like for context, my phone before this was an iPhone 11 and I have a couple friends that have the iPhone 12 and it is a night and day difference between the speakers on this phone and those previous phones. Something that they did in these speakers, it just makes this phone go crazy. But of course, I'm not complaining. So if you're somebody that isn't a fan of AirPods and you always use your phone on speaker mode, this is gonna be perfect for you. Now, the part that everyone loves about phones most, let's talk about the camera. So on this phone, you have a 48 megapixel main and a 12 megapixel wide. You have the sensor shift technology that gives you super smooth video and focus and depth control on all of your portraits. And also, yeah, it has the usual features like the photonic engine night mode and smart HDR5. But obviously looking at specs is one thing whereas I like to focus more on the actual day-to-day -day use. And day-to-day -day with this phone taking photos is a really awesome experience. The photos are crystal clear, have a lot of detail and have excellent colors. And video of course is super smooth with the sensor shift that kind of acts like active stabilization and even smooth when switching between the different lenses. Listen, I don't know about photos, but when it comes to video, I still think that the iPhone is just at the top. It's like really solid. Now, finally, let's talk about the battery life. Now, Apple claims that you get a 20 hour battery life on this phone. Now, luckily at its size with the A16 chip and with the battery, I find that that is pretty accurate. I'll be honest, most of the time I forget to charge this thing. All right, that's how good the battery is. And when I do, the charging comes in clutch. We're talking 50% battery charge in 30 minutes on a 20 watt charger. And of course the battery's cool, it charges fast, whatever. The main thing about this phone, and the main reason that I bought it in the first place is of course the headlining feature, USB-C. Now. We need to talk about this because the USB-C is the thing that actually got me to buy this phone in the first place. See, there's this thing that's happening where the tech improvements that are happening year over year are actually marginally not that great. All right, to be completely honest, unless you're upgrading from like an iPhone 8 or a 10, there really isn't a lot that pulls you to get these newer devices. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's just that these phones are so good that it's like, how much more do you, good do you need? You know what I mean? But when I heard that this phone has USB-C, that got me to click the buy button immediately. See, I have USB-C for everything. My computer's USB-C, my camera's USB-C, all my chargers are USB-C, my headphones, well, my headphones are lightning, but they also changed that on the AirPods too, so that's, that's not an issue. Point is, is that USB-C is the future and it's pretty much everything. And, and to be completely honest, Apple has been really slow on this. It's actually kind of bad and laughable that they've been using lightning this long. But the fact that there is now USB-C means that you have one cord to rule them all and you can finally just depend on one charging system for all your devices. All right, like imagine traveling around and not having to worry about carrying a ton of different cables or not worrying that you forgot a certain charging type because the phone is different than your laptop. I mean, think about how long ago it was that the iPad got USB-C. Now there are differences between this and the Pro when it comes to both data transfer speed and power, right? Like the Pro I think is USB-C 3.0 and this is 2.0, but it doesn't matter because let's be honest, lightning was mid. Any sort of USB-C on this phone is a direct immediate upgrade that is actually a game changer. Now, like I was saying, the battery life is pretty accurate. And if you wanna see me going through a full day actually testing this phone out, be sure to check out the day in the life video that I did. It'll be in the description. And you'll literally see in that video how clutch the USB-C fast charging comes in on this phone. And that's pretty much it. When it comes to the iPhone 15, it's a really solid phone, you know, with minor improvements to things like the camera, the screen, the glass back, and the fact that the rails are brushed means that honestly, it is the best looking phone right now. The fact that you don't get all those fingerprints, but you know, the main thing, the main driver for this phone is really USB-C. That is the game changer with this. And if you're somebody that's deep in the Apple ecosystem, you've got a USB-C iPad, you've got a USB-C Mac, then this phone is kind of a no-brainer. Also guys, for real, be sure to subscribe.